Bonjour, my name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV, the O de V edition. Today is day 20 of the Costco Wine Advent Box. Day 20's got me slightly nostalgic because, well, we're getting toward the end, and this has been enjoyable for me. Uh, it's fun to read your comments, to talk to people from last year, new people for this year. Uh, I enjoy it. I hope you've been enjoying it too. All right, day 20. Does feel like a milestone of some sort. I don't know why. What have we got? Okay, we've got a Syrah from the Pays de Ock. These tasting notes are coming handy in the last two episodes, this one and the previous one. Now, we've had a wine from the Pays de Ock, which is the Languedoc, that was on the 14th, the perfect match. Merlot. And then we had a Shiraz. That was the point taken South African Shiraz on the 16th. Here we are on the 20th with kind of a redo. We've got a Languedoc Syrah. Of course, Shiraz and Syrah are the same. So what am I going to talk about here? Well, I think I should probably talk about the way the French classify wines, because if you roll this around, you see that it's an indication, indication, in, I shouldn't say it like an Italian, I should say it like a Frenchman, indication uh, géographique protégé, indication geographic protégé, it's the lowest form of Appellation. Now, the French have created an entire appellation system, and there's most of the country follows this appellation system, and it generally works like this. If a wine is from an appellation, then it needs, gets to be named after the appellation. But if it's not from there, or it doesn't follow the historic style of that place, it can't carry the name. So, then they just put, they use international uh, marketing and they put the type of grape on there. So you can find, um, like there's a pretty decent uh, wine brand, uh, the old farm, Le Vieille Ferme, uh, that is got uh, animals on it. It's from France and it says Syrah, it says Pinot Noir, all kinds of things. I'll, I'll put a picture here. That brand is not from any specific historic area in France. It carries no specific labeling. So that's how the whole country generally does it. Great example of this is Champagne. If it says Champagne on it, it's from Champagne. Okay, now it gets a little bit more complicated in two of the most important regions, Burgundy and Bordeaux. Burgundy is in the center east of the country. Bordeaux is on the coast on the west. And there are two different ways of naming theirs. So in Burgundy, you have Grand Cru, you have Premier Cru, then you have Village, and then you have Superior. Grand Cru are the best fields that produce the most intense expression of that wine, either Pinot Noir or Chardonnay. That's what you get in Burgundy. Pinot Noir, Chardonnay. Grand Cru. Then Premier Cru is the second level. It's one step down. It's almost Grand, but it's not Grand. And the geography in Burgundy is named. The geography is named. So that plot of land is Grand Cru. This plot of land is Premier Cru. Village, which is literally village, is land around the village. That's not Grand Cru, not Premier Cru, it's village wine. And then Superior is the greater area outside of Grand Cru, Premier Cru, and Village. And they would all be named after the regions that they would be grown in. So that's how they do it in Burgundy. But in Bordeaux, 
they classify the producer, not the land. It's the producer who does it. So you have you could have a Grand Cru in Bordeaux, but you have to be classified as a Grand Cru producer. Premier Cru uh, doesn't really exist in Bordeaux. And then you've got Bordeaux, Bordeaux Superior, etc., etc. So if you are a company, a producer like Chateau Le Tour or uh, uh, oh, I'm blanking out, there's a uh, Cheval Blanc, uh, then that producer buys the field next to them from Jimmy over here. Jimmy sells the field, and Jimmy's wine has never been made well. It's just garbage. But Chateau Le Tour buys Jimmy's land. All of a sudden, Jimmy's land becomes Grand Cru in Bordeaux. So in Burgundy, they classify the land, not the producer. And in Bordeaux, they classify the producer, not the land. Little hidden secret there. In the Languedoc, <laughs> it's all general bulk, regular old workman wine. Nobody cares. Let's just drink it. So let's do that. I have filled out the top of my tasting card. And I... I like Syrahs. I drink a bunch of them. Um, they, from this region south of France, uh, from the Languedoc or the Côte d'Aronne, they are smooth, inoffensive, big, bold, very uh, unctuous, um, great, uh, not overly tannic, just, just really food friendly. And inexpensive. Fifteen, twenty dollars will buy you a good example. You gotta be careful when you get over into the Cote de Rhone, but the Languedoc stuff, yeah, it's even cheaper. You can get it for ten. I want a meatiness, I want fresh fruit flavors, plum. Blackberry, cedar box, licorice. These are the things I'm looking for. Saturated, big saturated flavors. Okay. Color looks good. Here's what the wine looks like. There it is. It's black. It should be nice. This is this was starting out looking great. Okay. Uh, what is it? More purple or more red? It's probably more reddish, and it's dark. Lovely. Okay, come on. Show me something here. That's blackberry and blueberry for sure. Ooh, it's cool. It's cold. That can almost smell the chill. And now, cocoa. Oh, this is, yeah, that's cocoa. Oh, this is very nice. Uh, blueberry and cocoa. Oh, you know what? I haven't done it yet. I'm not even sure I did it once last year. I'm going to give this a 10. First time for everything. <laughs> All right. Now let's see if that score holds up through the tasting. Mmm. Okay. Dry or sweet? It's dry. It's a medium full body. The acidity is smooth. You hardly even... Notice the tartness, but there it is. There's my mouth starting to water. Don't get confused either by the tannins here. Those are going to be that first initial feel. Don't let those fool you. The acidity is there. It's nicely done. I'll give it an eight. Balance. It's good. 
the tannins feel a little bit bigger and rougher, but my gums, my gums, my, my lips are not sticking to my gums. That's kind of the indicator of a real aggressive tannins. But the tannins here are on the front of the tongue, and the tongue can kind of feel that, that grippiness. The alcohol level here, which listed is 13%, could be 1.5% off. It could be as high as 14.5%. No, absolutely no burn. That's very good. The acidity is nice. There's no uh, overdoing it in the sugars, and the tannins are nice. Nice balance. I'll give it a 9. What would be a 10? I don't know. It's just something a little bit finer with the tannins, probably. Now, complexity. Hmm. Do I get any additional flavors? The aroma is great. The balance is great. The acidity is fine. The complexity, where is there anything else? Does the, does the wine grab me and say, drink more of me? Come on. No, it doesn't do that. Is it disappointing? No, it's not. It's not disappointing. I am interested in it. But I'm only going to say some flavors here. I'm going to give it a six. Finish in length. It is a long finish. The acidity kind of shows up more present in the finish. That's nice. The grippiness of the tannins does hold on and eventually bleeds off. It's a nice finish. It adds to the sensation. It's not a great finish. I'll give it a six. Okay. I'm going to go do my math. Okay, here are my final scores for our Languedoc Syrah. Aroma, 10. <laughs> Acidity, 8. Balance, 9. Complexity, 6. Finish in length, 6. 39 points. Add that to 50. 89 points. One little point shy of 90 points. Yes, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. The Languedoc quality is improving. It's going up all the time. This is an up-and-coming wine region in France. It's probably where you're going to find the best value wines from France at this current moment, 2022. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, you've got a lot of extra to watch and please consider subscribing and I will be back tomorrow for day number 21. Until then, I say a tutelaire and cheers. <sighs> Hello. Okay, Sarah. That looks a little familiar to me. That birdcage on the head, I don't know. That is dark. Fruity. Kind of like um, deep, damp yumminess, not like deep, damp basement smell. Okay. That has a big body. I can notice the tannins. It makes me want to take another sip. I would say it's not quite as easy of a drinker as that rosé was from yesterday, which apparently was simple, but whatever. This is interesting. It's good. Cheers. <laughs>